Hi there folks, this is Call, and um, this is going to be my last talk on uh, Feminine Principle. As we all know, um, each gender has its own masculine and its own feminine, and between those two, if they divinely attune or I could even say in its ultimate potential, which is limitless, uh, as we can handle it, there is a birth of the new between the two. In this world, if we're not aware, we do a lot of miscreation instead of creating ourselves a reality we truly desire to have is mostly because our minds could be undisciplined and thinking thoughts that create what we don't want and at the same time rejecting feelings that reflect this so-called negative um, thought patterns and so we get these feelings we don't particularly like to feel on my last podcast I concluded with a statement that feeling is all there is and that I would address that but to get to that one is to allow this part of ourselves we call feminine or the will of God where all the inheritance and where all the treasures of our existence are being placed the kingdom of heaven, the queendom of heaven name it what you like but until it is ignited in you in who? in you, right? You can listen to others talk about it, but it has to be your own experience. Mm -hmm. And this is a time where we let go of traditions, because traditions have projected ideas of enlightenment, ideas of completion, but idea is one thing and an experience of it is something entirely different so we move our head forward a little bit so we begin to feel downstairs so we begin to feel the lower realms of spiritual guidance is going up and higher and more refined energies yeah but they also have to reflect in our feeling and so lower we allow ourselves to go <laughs> the higher we will go it's not necessarily the other way around because it can go higher, higher, higher and leave this world behind and um, that do have two sides to it one is good you enter some realms that my, you might have not seen before or not experienced before and they can be lovely however if we're not grounded in our feelings we can pick up on all sorts of light that might not be in long term desirable so I warmly recommend that we begin to feel deeper below that we feel 
lower than we believe we are. Because mm -hmm. we have this scope that we have this body. And we might even have the images of, or experience even, of more subtle bodies. Huh? But to fully enter into the feeling realm, it's one has to get an invitation. Um, when a mind is trained and knows how to be truly present, which I'm probably going to address in the masculine principle more, until the mind knows how to be truly present for the feelings, the feeling is not going to fully open up to us and invite us in. So, in there we feel that feelings are receptive and something to be entered into. But the feeling will make choices whether the mind is trained and you can't fool these deep feeling levels. They'll know when you're true, when you're really honest with yourself, we you no longer deny yourself for the outside world, but you establish your own kingdom as you desire it to be. And then um, stick to it. So there's a certain level of awakening that happens upstairs in the mind mind awakens, it broadens, it opens. But at some point it will turn down, downwards, and meet this feeling realm. This feeling realm will then assess and will decide whether it's going to let it to be open to, to receive you as a clean genuine masculine presence that it's in both genders obviously once this happens and it can always go deeper and deeper the feeling level begins to enlighten the masculine presence it will reflect it in itself From this reflection, the mind can refine itself even more. It begins to release its thought patterns and judgments and empty out programming that was given to, to you ever since you were born. So when we're born, we are this being that doesn't think. We only feel. So in that sense, feeling is primary. Yeah, it's our base of existence. Like I said at the beginning, you know, feeling is all there is. Then comes the programming of, you know, your parents speaking to you, your siblings, and you begin to imitate the others. And um, this can be positive, but it could be all sorts of other things as well. And um, so when we get to these deeper levels of feeling, that will actually reflect to us um, when the mind is not purified yet of these programs. It can be sped up by, let's say, doing the 365 lesson of A Course of Miracles. It's a beautiful purification process that gets you to do daily lessons to train your mind 
to begin to see things differently. So that means away from this programming that has been I guess imposed on you in some way and of course you received it because you're this innocent receptive pulling in um, being that was just ready to absorb whatever was around it a lot of the absorption happened even before you were born so for example if the mother was in some disharmony with the man that she was with she could not truly respond and she would be pushing some feelings and emotions downwards yeah putting the lid on what needs to be expressed what needed to be reflected you as a child down there you would be receiving some messages even on this energetic realm and all of this can be noticed and released and expressed particularly when we begin to address um, more what's happening in our feeling bodies and what's placed in there and what needs release and um, what needs movement because most of the feelings are quite frozen the whole feeling area could be frozen area now th those days when you go like how are you feeling i'm just like, i'm not feeling anything i'm feeling nothing that's a feeling that is a feeling of feeling nothing it is actually a feeling so there is a long way to go if we want to deepen this realm of feeling and open it up to a point where you join with this feeling field that is all around you right? we are in this electromagnetic field in which we are ignited by this prana we call it prana or energy that's around us yeah. but most of it comes from within like this world is not necessarily going at us but it's going from us yeah what's in us gets projected outwards and so um making friends with feelings like i address feelings that i've mentioned in a third podcast is um a good few steps to make to get in touch with negative feelings or the feelings that we judge as not good or undesirable and begin to look at them again to see what's in them because in those feelings are those treasures we are looking for like I mentioned that story of princess and a frog yeah you begin to really change your attitude towards these feelings and they will begin to transform because they only were reflecting your mind and so what seemed like a feeling that you don't like or try to avoid you'll begin to see that it's not what you thought it was that's why i really recommend to do Course of Miracles, but in a very feeling way. And I'd like to say a few words to this because what happened generally with Course of Miracles, it became like a, a mental toy. Yeah? You can overtrain your mind and then start thinking that all those concepts in there are actually what you need to know. But it's not so. Chorus of Miracles works like this. It gives you a lesson every day, and each sentence, each heading of that lesson, should generate a, some kind of response in you. So that response is what you are looking for. So if it says, for example, 
lesson 61 I am the light of the world you close your eyes and you say I am the light of the world and you will have a response like no I'm not I feel like I'm this blob of <laughs> meat and bones right and then you repeat again I am the light of the world and then you look at your next response and the next response and what you're looking for is an experience of I am the light of the world and it's not that you need some commentaries about what it is or some interpretation of what it is you want to find out what it is as you as who you are as a light of the world you might think well no Jesus was the light of the world and um, if we all follow them we're gonna be okay one day <laughs> no 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 he's just saying you hey this was what I did I realized I was the light of the world and so if you want to be like me and do greater things that I have done then say that and you go I am the light of the world and all of a sudden something moves in you what do you think that movement is yeah that is when part of your feeling begins to reflect what that truly means in truth yeah and one day you will say it again I'm the light of the world and the most exquisite embrace that comes from within and you will feel engulfed in this light that you are and you will begin to immediately radiate it and if not, you will learn later on, let's say in lesson 108, how to give this light of the world. And you will learn that by giving that light of the world, you sustain it. So you can have an experience for a moment, and then your thoughts kick in, or some emotions kick in, or some needs kick in, like, oh, I just have to make myself a cup of tea which is usually a desire to get rid of this light. Most of the time when we have these deep spiritual experiences, they happen. And then a few days later we go like, wow, where is that? Where is that moment? I want it again. What you don't see, that somewhere you got rid of it. You got rid of it by thinking about something that has nothing to do with this light. And so you made a choice for something else. And that's how you lost it. But it's not lost. It's just like when you lose keys, right? The keys are somewhere. You just don't remember where. So you go back to the lesson and go, I'm the light of the world. And boom, there it is again. But also brand new. Because now you have a deeper understanding that once the light has come, you don't want to exchange it for a cup of coffee or going on your device or doing something else. But you want to learn how to become that and incarnate it fully. So every cell in your body vibrates in the speed of this light. So this is how the Course in Miracles works. There are thousands of books written by people who um, began to make commentaries around Course in Miracles. But um, they usually take us away from the experience and begin to explain things. And the mind, ego mind, loves this. Oh yeah, yeah, let me get some understandings. Let me see what others got from this. Yeah, 
but it's it's not good to you if you hear about some dude that's enlightened or or awakened and you just think that that's not you so you really just want to have your own awakening and then with the awakening comes this connection to the experience and learning how to sustain the experience so you become in this sustain love or Christ awareness of light and you don't disrupt yourself out of it so this is very important and it can be used on any materials that are of a deep quality look things that Barry sends out some beautiful beautiful things but they need to be felt yeah that feminine principle is the focus of times at the moment where we need to really really learn how to feel again because we have so many spiritual concepts and uh, we know of many many who had experiences but it's time now for us to have the experience and what is an experience well we feel something so any kind of practices that help us to feel one thing at a time is gold you can grab a lesson of the course or grab some kind of statement that touches you huh? it's another thing you know when you read something and something touches you stop reading stop listening and enter the kingdom enter that that place in you that got touched yeah because something penetrated through the thick layers of defensiveness and and uh, um, physical barriers into inside somewhere where there is still a little bit of vibration left hmm. And what we want to do, we want to reverberate it back. There is an aliveness that comes with touching onto these realms where once touched, we park in. We park yourself in that place and we stay. and stay and stay you will also notice that when you in this place where you touched can happen even like watching a movie you're watching something and suddenly it's like oh i'm touched yeah the story the story took you and led you to some place where somebody has a heart opening situation and or you have a heart opening, heart opening situation to what's occurring on a screen and then at that point stay stay and allow more of the feeling and experience to radiate out of you so more you feel it the more you will begin to feel like it's coming out of your body allow that more and allow yourself to virtually flood the area as if this was some form of a liquid and it's extending out of you extending out of you and it's filling up the room or the space you occupy and it keeps pouring out you will actually see that you have a capacity of this essence of your being is enormous and it can flood the whole area you're in it can flood so big that you could virtually go at the end of this solar system as if expanding and extending further and further and further to a point where you can reach out and feel 
to the end of cosmos, to end of anywhere <laughs> where there is something or where there isn't something. You go far beyond the limitation of this world. Mm. And you begin to enter into the celestial realms where there is all sorts of other states of being that one can experience but not just in the mind. And uh, when I say mind, it's very important to know that mind is often considered to be something that's in our upper realms of association. Like when I ask people, like, where is mind? People often point to their head. When we look at the dictionary, it says that it's a part of us that thinks and feels. So that's a very important distinction to consider when it comes to the word mind. That it's not just that part of us that is enjoying thinking. Actually, let me read it from the dictionary directly. It's a mind is the element of a person that enables them to be aware of the world. The element of a person that enables them to be aware of the world and their experiences. To think and to feel the faculty of consciousness and thought. So, when we say mind, it's much broader than we are accustomed to focus on. And there is a word in Course of Miracles called at one meant at one meant atonement at one meant so we can pronounce it differently and see it differently um, and what this at one meant really means is that you unite yourself with this part of you that feels more and more I also did mention before that some people are way more feeling than others. Um, and they see all of this from a different perspective because their predominant realm is feeling. And um, you begin to talk at them, particularly if you speak a bit faster, they will just blank out and go like, huh? What? Because they live in this very slow realm of feeling. So also to remember that feelings are slower than thoughts. Thoughts are electric and therefore much faster vibrating. The feelings are magnetic. So they're more like, oh, yeah, more like a flow. Whereas thoughts are more like sequences. I have this thought about this, right? Like one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's like it's a, it's more in time. Whereas feelings is more like a spaciousness, like a space. Huh? But even that can be completely transformed by this quality or, or by this intent to give feeling more space to inform what they are all about and what these feelings are capable of. So as we train ourselves to step back from thinking and become receptive to feelings, the feelings will begin to take over in a most delicious way. 
because we're no longer running into this remembered feelings or the feelings we are often conscious of we begin to enter into the realm of feelings that don't think there's no thought there's only feeling pure feeling until we get to that place from which all feeling comes from you might have heard that tiny little giggle that happens because that's what happens every time I drop into past the level of historical feelings that were condemned to some like I call it crucifixion really we nailed some feelings as undesirable we don't want them we don't want them to move and that's all they are they are these crucified images internal images then then project outward uh, as people or as situations that get also nailed it's like oh I don't want to see this anymore yeah because it's some image that trigger in us these feelings we don't really want to look at so when we train ourselves to dispel this wall of feelings that we rejected before and begin to transform them to the steps in the podcast three they begin to loosen up and then suddenly we get in touch with a much larger part of ourselves now I'm talking and even so I'm talking I'm feeling this deep 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 realm of feeling that's below me however comes a time where words cease to be one could call it that's the peace that passes understanding if I pronounce that well and um, you will be informed by this profound light that has way more in my experience the golden quality than the silver because if I go past my thoughts and I keep going upwards or sideways I get into a realm of uh, a very silvery type of experience of light so for example I have this buddy of mine that comes every Saturday and he reads me a lesson from A Course of Miracles and as soon as he says first word my physical awareness vanishes in an instant and I enter into this silver realm however if I have a friend who comes and reads right use of will with me, <laughs> I disappear into a very different quality and it's much more like a golden experience, I call it. That's why when I saw that picture that I'm using for this podcast, I said like, oh, that's so perfectly it. Because it's so... It's not so much about that image of a, a feminine, a woman person, but it's more about the environment from which or where that image is placed into. It's got this golden feeling, golden colors, more like yellowish, because how would you do that, but still it gives that feeling of gold whereas for me when when I enter into these realms that are of the mind they they of course it's a silver like you never seen before because it comes from within and it's not an image it really is a light and so now we have this silver and now we have this gold so imagine these huge circles, big one big circle above that's silver. Hmm? But it's you, right? 
and then one golden circle that's below you or below this silver circle they are both equal size and they just about touch right and so when these two flow in its totality to begin to create a third circle and that circle is the heart it's a birth of a new experience a new life a new creation fed by these two qualities hmm? as one is not pressing or imposing onto the other but they create this new thing which some of it is golden and some of it is silver and creates this what I call the Christ consciousness or the child the child of God or hey these are labels but as an experience it's an experience of unspeakable love which has nothing to do with what we know in this world as love it's a completely different thing where things like I love you <laughs> does not really enter because you read you are it there is nothing else in full expression but there is something else which is something that encompasses all of this and this I call the embrace or the elevated self of form where your body is no longer as dense as it appeared before where your body can vanish in a twinkling of an eye and you are in this perfect wholeness hmm? and this happens when I cease to speak I used to use I stopped talking and then it's no longer even a thought and a feeling but it's the united field of the two which create perfect oneness so the singular mind yeah the experience of perfect oneness perfect oneness not just oneness because you can have this feeling of oneness in your mind like you meditate and you vanish into your this silvery state and um, you might think hey this is beautiful um, but that's just like what we call the spirit polarized experience and it feels complete because that spirit polarized experience also has a spirit will and the heart uh -huh. but when that is in a full alignment you will become aware of the will which is a, which has a spirit will and a heart in itself as a complete magnetic field these two when in full alignment create the real heart yeah and all of that encompass in one which we call body but this is we're talking about the elevated body or our elevated self of form which is so beautifully explained in a course of love that's why I call this these three bodies of work which are huge the ultimate trilogy <laughs> oh my god the ultimate trilogy because one of them help me to train my mind the other one open my feeling realm like I have never dreamed of before 
and a course of love have united the two into this new heart which has nothing to do with the heart I knew before and like we have to go like in our chest somewhere there is this presence called heart this is not like that actually but it was good until then um, but this brought heart into the center of the being and it doesn't have to do as much with the physical body as we could possibly imagine now here comes the beauty of meeting a friend or another person in what I call a holy relationship not a special, not a one's like hey, we're in love now and we exclude everyone else because only you can even only love me and I can only love you and then we'll have a child and we'll be family and that's beautiful and it's perfect but this is where we're going to the holy relationship where I have this with everyone <laughs> I actually have that with you um, speaking to or is listening to me right now because we are one heart and when this inner transformation comes in we realize we are one heart and then your heart my heart or your heart and then one else's heart are constantly forever in union and a perfect connection they're in a relationship right but it hasn't got specialty because it doesn't exclude somebody else hmm. and that does not mean that uh, it, does, it doesn't really one could say well what you go and make love to everybody <laughs> uh, they, you know, that, that, there is something else where two can come more into the physical and um, you know sexual relationship I'm not talking about that because this state of awareness for me goes way way beyond um, the need for the sexual because the fulfillment is complete and um, So I'll talk a little bit about what is my experience with this. Um, so when I meet somebody in this new way of relating, so I have my silver light, I have my golden light, I have the child born and a body is in the elevated self of form, and I meet another person. It could be man or a woman. It actually it's not gender oriented because I have this exquisite relationship with men too that way beyond sexual expression or anything that would suggest some kind of merging of two men but this is different in some way because it's sharing this heart that you are with another heart so it looks a little bit like this um, so there is another person could be even on a zoom call or doesn't have to be in my immediate vicinity uh, and then we cease to sp speak but at this point it's so accustomed that you wouldn't even want to speak even if you could right because it begins to same as I have this relationship between me, what I call the silver part that's talking right now with my golden light and uniting in the heart, immediately becomes the same thing with the other person. But one of us is a giver and the other one is more like a receiver, right? So let's say I'm in this exquisite light and I go, hey, <laughs> hello and the other person goes oh my god <laughs> right because it receives the not my hello but it receives the presence because hmm? in this case 
and particularly let's play for a moment that I'm a man and this is a woman I am the masculine presence although even with a man one of us will be more of a presence and the other one will be more of the receptivity of that presence which can shift at any point into the presence and I become the receptivity of that presence this becomes the sign of the infinity yeah either I'm giving and in a second I'm receiving so it just keeps flowing there and back there and back but it's a brand new creation we're creating a new relationship that is not based on needs there's no need to do this like I'm completing myself however meeting and this is something I'm discovering this is brand new actually and um, I, I could do this a long time ago I just could not really see it as it as I see it now and so we enter into this giving and receiving realm however when I give into the feminine my pure presence she'll feel it and she will she will becomes to be seen by it and I remember when I sent my first podcast out on a feminine principle there were a few comments saying like what is a guy talking about what is a man talking about the feminine what does he know there is one thing that's very precious and then when we begin to learn about it it becomes the actual gold of it all and that is that I see feminine the way feminine cannot see itself and I also know that feminine can see my presence the way I can't really see in myself like I've seen women going and doing women's work and they come back and whatever they think they were doing that made them more feminine or more into their feminine to me as a man I would go like well it sounds like you guys had a fun but this is not what I see because you see they are all water they all just join the different textures of water and they mix it right they still can't see the way we see them yeah. same as men and they go and do this all sorts of things and then women go like oh, hey man you're doing all this work but where are you <laughs> you're not meeting us in a place where we truly desire to be met and how we truly desire to be met yeah. because women have desires that they keep hidden they might keep them hidden and not really let the men know what they are and so the man is supposed to figure it out it doesn't work like that there's a way to open this self in such a way where those desires become to be seen with a different eye than looks out of a face yeah. this is where, where the masculine is in its full presence so when I sit with this person who is equally in this full alignment of light we begin to reflect to each other what's in there and that's the beauty that's the creation of the new because my brand new light meet with that brand new light and we're looking at what is this third thing that is being born out of that yeah because I could sit with one person and something completely different begins to emerge from that dynamic or from my quality of light mixing with that quality of light because we all have all these exquisite treasures within ourselves what I call the inheritance God's inheritance everybody has it it's hidden deep 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 in our feelings and it only comes out when we begin to search for our true desires. Hmm? They're already in us. 
Uh -huh. We just need to figure out what are they and then stick to them, follow through, allow them to come to our conscious awareness and then add the feeling part of it. Yes? So they can go into this full expression and through that expression go into fulfillment because the more you give that, more you receive that. Mm -hmm. And maybe you're noticing that this is not particularly what traditions teach. Yeah? Because now we're coming to a time of when the intermediaries come to an end, you no longer will going to need much of a teaching because you are have learned everything you ever had to learn and realize it's not about learning, it's about creating. And so you begin to enter into a state where you begin to create. You create new. Actually, let me leave it at that word. You're creating the new. You're creating something that was not before. And cause of miracles. This is beautifully explained, and um, it's called the peace of God. And they have this three question like, how is it recognized? How is it found? And being found, how is it retained? The first is like, how is he recognized? And it says, God's peace is recognized at first by just one thing. Uh, really pay attention to this. In every way, it is totally unlike all previous experiences. So if you are in this new light and you it's similar to something or resembling something, it's not it. You're just mocking up something from the past. But imagine everything's gone. Nothing you know is in there. And suddenly there is this brand new thing. Hmm? See, it calls to mind nothing that went before. It brings with itself no past associations. Yeah? There is a contrast, yes, between this thing and all the past. But strangely, it is not a contrast of true differences. Watch this. The past just slips away and in its place is everlasting quiet. Only that. The contrast first perceived has merely gone. Quiet has reached to cover everything. And that's just the first question. How is it recognized? Okay? So what I'm trying to use this for is that Unless it begins to be a brand new moment, like you've never experienced before. Like somebody said, you know, like you're rearranging furniture on Titanic. Eh? So it's all very pretty and it's all beautiful and you're on this amazing cruise, but it's going to sink. <laughs> yeah, right? And so you go like, oh, just before it sinks, let's make this beautiful furniture and this beautiful scenery different. But we are playing with all toys. This is where everything of the past is gone. You're in the now, meaning you're not entertaining your mind or you're not preoccupying your mind with past. Eh? And this is purely cause of miracles. Eh? The mind training. Like mind needs to be prepared for these profound experiences. Otherwise, it's if the mind is not ready, the heart cannot possibly be born because the will of the feeling self is not going to invite you in. Yeah? Because it knows only purity and if this unpure or or programmed or matrix mind comes in, it basically says, no, 
<laughs> this does not fit in here because here is the source of creation so I'm not even saying that feeling is the creation but the silver and a gold meeting in the heart creating a brand new thing that wasn't there before is so I'm not going to read the rest of it because you can find that in uh, Manual for Teachers, Chapter 20 in uh, Course of Miracles. So, this new way of being with another creates a new relationship in a way that wasn't before. It does not have the... is not there to fulfill some needs because you fulfilled in yourself but you got that just to create the brand new not that you need it because you're doing that in yourself however and this is where I really get this two or more together there I am mm -hmm. why? because when two are there there is this exquisite divine polarity between the spirit and the will the feeling self, thought and a feeling, creating the third, which is the heart, which is what Jesus is. And in that, you will realize that Jesus and you are one. And because he always says, hey, I'm your brother. I'm not your father. I'm your brother. And the greater things will you do. Because it's no longer going to be observable, right? You know, just observing with these eyes and expecting some things to happen in the world so much as it happens on in you. You recreate yourself and you awaken to the self. as God created you in God's likeness to become the same actually you don't become yourself you already are that you already are the accomplished however that has to be a, a your inner experience because you can keep repeating, I'm the accomplished, I'm the accomplished. And it could be just like a mental exercise. But when that becomes an experience, which is usually the unspeakable love, where mouth cannot talk about this, mm -hmm. we enter into this will of God, and we realize this this will, these gifts of God are all there is. Mm -hmm. And it gets perfectly reflected to wherever you look. Because you're no longer attracting to your life um, characters who need to trigger you so you can undo or forgive your um your grievances or your past lives or past past experiences of this life you know forgiving your parents or forgiving your you realize it was you from the very beginning and because it was you you can forgive everything in you yeah why because you understand the true forgiveness which is you use the reflection of this world to show you what's within you and then notice that your relationship to that is special is not whole and so you begin you begin to transform it you begin to forgive it yeah you give it away in a way of finding an alignment within yourself and instead of judging the feeling that someone else triggers in you you use it to transform yourself mm -hmm. 
So instead of putting a lid on feelings that begin to flow, the up of upward flow will enlighten your mind from within. Your enlightened mind with begin to look at feelings differently. Look at that realm of feeling. And again, this is just a label. Until you become one in all of this. Birth the heart. Birth the new. And the new is going to be your job to find out what it is. Because it's beyond what can be told. So on this note, I'm going to conclude this series on um, the feminine principle and I thank you all for sticking with me um, going through this exquisite journey I just, just love to share and uh, give away because it's just uh, something that was given to me and maybe through a little bit of effort on my part which eventually I learned it to be an effortless creation because creation does not require doing <laughs> and my only greatest gift is that when I give it and it's received and it's reflected back that it fulfills the destiny path of my existence and yours and so thank you for listening for your responses for your love and i'll catch up with you next time